Want to know the findings of a recent study all around organizations and their automation testing efforts? Have you ever seen how to create automated JMeter performance tests using a Java DSL? Do you know that only 3% of open source software bugs are actually attackable? So stay tuned to these and other end-to-end -end full pipeline DevOps, automation testing, performance testing, and security testing in 10 minutes or less in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of July 3rd. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Guild News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools is a next generation test automation platform powered by visual AI, which helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and reduce costs with the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But seeing is believing, so create your free account now by clicking in the link in the first comment down below. And while you're there, why not like, leave a comment, and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. So maybe you've been doing automation testing for a while, and you've heard that automation testing is software development, but maybe you don't have a background in object-oriented programming. So I found this great article. It's gonna be part of a four-part four series by Boz, talking all about introduction to the four pillars of object-oriented programming. By Boz, if you don't know Boz, Boz is a go-to resource for all things automation, especially API testing. In his four-part series, it's gonna cover four main areas. The first one is encapsulation, and that's what this post goes over, but you definitely want to follow him because he's also going to cover inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. And he goes over in detail what things are, gives an example, shows different programming languages, how it might look, and more importantly, how these principles apply to automation. So definitely a go-to resource. I'll have a link for it in the first comment down below. And thank you, Boz, for all you do for the community. If you're not following them, you definitely want to follow them to stay tuned on the rest of this four-part series. So I know a lot of automation engineers actually use Jenkins to run their automated tests. So if that's you, you're going to want to listen to this next news article I found because it's going to impact what Java version is going to be required for you going forward using Jenkins. And it's taken a while, but the Jenkins project confirmed this week that Java 11 will be required from this week's Jenkins 2.357 and for the upcoming September LTS release. And I know actually a lot of companies that haven't done this yet because the shift from Java 8 to 9 and beyond presents many developers with all kinds of challenges from technical in terms of language and runtime changes to legal. So there's a lot of different things that need to go on in order for you to upgrade to Java 11. And to make matters worse, Java 17 is also lurking in the background. So if you're an automation engineer, I'm sure you're familiar with Flaky Test. And I know a lot of different tool vendors that come up with this functionality, and that's the ability to add analytics to your tools to identify Flaky app test. And this latest is from BuildKite. So BuildKite has added an analytics tool to its continuous integration to continuous delivery CI/CD platform that helps you identify flaky test. And if you don't know, according to a recent study, 59% of developers deal with flaky tests on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And that's one of the reasons why BuildKite added this new functionality to their application. So we talk about Jenkins, but there's other tools you can use as well for your CI CD platforms, and BuildKite is one of them. So if you do use BuildKite, let me know in the comments below what you think of it and let others know how it may help you with your CI CD efforts as well. So this next article is by the folks at Key Sites on research they did on different organizations and their efforts were automation testing and some interesting things were revealed in the study that you definitely want to check out as well. And so this research dives into what they found with different organizations. And one of them was, what test approach does your company use? I thought this was interesting. 11% said that they have a fully automated approach. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing that. 32% say automated with some manual. 25% say half manual and half automated. And I'm surprised 18% said manual with some automation and 13% are still fully manual. So a lot of times when I spoke to companies earlier in my career, a lot of them didn't know about automation. They were just starting with automation. This study actually shows that Automation is gaining inroads with 75% of organizations using a combination of both automated and manual testing. However, only 11% have a fully automated strategy. With the growing complexity, the number of tests is also increasing. And what's also interesting about the study is that respondents ranked the outcomes on their business impact into these main buckets. 51% said they're most concerned about security breach risk. 48% say increased expenses, 42% say slow time to the market, 36% feel 
talk about defective product, and 34 talk about loss of revenue. So I definitely have been seeing security as a trend, and this article points it out as well as people finding that as a need for their organization. So a lot of other cool stuff this research has shown. So you definitely want to see it in the comment down below. And a few years ago at Automation Guild, I had a session by Rex Jones on Test NG. It was one of the highest rated sessions that year for the conference. So I found this next article by Rex Jones that actually explains, breaks down step-by-step -step Test NG that you definitely should check out. If you're using Test NG, if you heard about Test NG and you're not sure what it is. So this is actually part of a two-part video series where Rex breaks down all things test NG, test automation framework. And he goes over things like what is the test NG annotations all about, types of annotation in test NG. So he has a great demo also in this video on the test annotations and also how to configure the annotations and also different ways that he's implemented the test annotations as well. So thank you, Rex, for that. And I'll have a link for it in the comment down below. And you definitely should give that a view. Next up, performance and site reliability news. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know one of my go-to resources for all things performance, performance-related testing, is not only Scott Moore, but also the folks at PerfBytes. If you haven't checked out their Twitch or YouTube channel, I highly recommend you subscribe there as well. But this next article caught my attention. It's an interview, a demo, hosted by Mark Tomlinson on how to use JMeter DSL, so scripting performance tests using JMeter and Java in an IDE. And so this does a really good breakdown of JMeter scripts written in Java. It's a great new functionality. If you don't know about it, you definitely should check out. And this is a video series that breaks it down step-by-step step for you to get started. So thank you, Mark Tomlinson and the folks at PerfBytes for delivering awesome content week after week on performance. So I found another great resource on a day-in-the-life type article on how site reliability engineering is done at Visa. And this is by Nishida, who goes over how they define what is site reliability engineering, what they do to pay attention to certain systems to make sure they're more observable, how they deal with toil, what the power of automation is that they've seen as they've implemented it, how they reduced operational dependencies, and some good retrospective on collaboration and some other cool insights on tooling as well. So if you're doing anything with site reliability engineering or you want to know how other companies are implementing it, here's another great article of what another company learned as they implemented it site reliable engineering for their organization. So back in the day, early, early 2000s, when I was doing performance testing, one of the hardest things to debug or troubleshoot was issues in performance within the database layer. So this next article is how the folks from Datadog that helps you really get some insights into some key metrics for your load metrics within your database. So thank you, Kyle, for posting this on LinkedIn. And it goes over how to actually analyze weight events and in-flight queries within the Datadog database list. Uh, what I really like, it also covers how to identify and troubleshoot overloaded databases, how to investigate performance issues with detailed query metrics, how to get started with the Datadog database, and more. This had me drooling that I wish I had this back in the day because it would have made my life so much easier. But you don't have to go through that. So if you're doing anything with performance and dealing with databases, you're going to want to check this out and see how it can help you and your organizations as well. And there'll be a link for it once again in the first comment down below. Next up, security testing news. So this next article talks about how they found only 3% of open source software bugs are actually attackable. So a new study says that 97% of open source vulnerabilities linked to software supply chain risk are not attackable but is attackability the best method for prioritizing bugs? This is something I think everyone struggles with. You need to, when any time you're doing anything with testing, you need to assign risk value to them. And so this talks about making the determination of what's attackable. So this really helps you break down and simplify your threat modeling approach to open source vulnerabilities with the goal of drastically cutting down your fire drills. All right, this next tool came my way via LinkedIn from my friend Akshay. Thank you, Akshay, for your support. Um, it's on SaaS and a cool tool he used and recommends that I think you should know about as well. And the tool he came across is SEMGREP, which is an open source tool which runs on Python. I never heard of it, so when I went to the site, it's a static analysis at ludicrous speed, finding the bugs and enforces code standards. And for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head over to links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, and click on their free account offer to take your automation testing to the next level using 
visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end to end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, that's everything and keep the good. Cheers.